Hello there and welcome. I am Matt Seuss and today I'm going to share with you how I composite different photos together using On One Photo 10. In this video I'll be using the layers module and doing some masking and also going into the effects module to enhance certain parts of the photo. So let's get started working on these photos right away. As you can see here on the screen, I have five different photos, and this was taken during a night light painting session that I was doing. My camera was on a tripod, so all these photos are lined up really well. And what I was doing was taking different photos and doing different exposures and light painting for specific areas of the photo, and my intention was to blend all these together later. So you can see here that I have a photo over here that is all for the sky. I have some photos here that this one here is photographed specifically for the window. I put a red light inside there. And then underneath the truck, I got a red light under there. And then I have a nice white light on the truck itself and a blue light. So what I want to do is creatively blend all of these photos together into one. And to do that, I'm going to select all of these photos and I'm going to go into layers. And by selecting all of these photos at once and adding them as a layer, they will open up in layers all one on top of the other. So we'll just wait for that to get into layers. Okay, great. So first thing I'm going to do is put the sky layer on the very top. And what I want to do is mask out the sky so that I have the sky will then be the base for everything else that I'm going to be building on top of this photo. So what I'll do here is I will start off with the quick mask and let me shrink the brush size down a little bit using the bracket keys. And I'm just going to paint in the sky area, get a nice overview of the sky, selecting both the sky and the clouds, and we'll let that do its magic. Okay, great. It's done a pretty good job. I can see a little bit of work that needs to be done here in the trees. And before I get into doing that isolated work, I'm going to add a new color layer here. And this is a color fill layer. I'm going to add it as black. And then I'm just going to drop this right down behind my sky layer and then go back in and make sure that I have my sky layer selected. This enables me to really see how the cutout that I'm doing on the sky is coming along. And I can already see here I got just a little bit of work to do around the edges. I'm going to use the masking brush and let's start off with the perfect brush. Now new in 10.5 I have some adjustments here on the color threshold. And let's just set that at about 30 right now and we'll see how that works. Okay, so now to start masking this out, what I'm going to do is hold on to the command key. And then I'm going to click down in this area right over here. And by doing that and holding on to the command key, I've locked in that color that I just selected when I first clicked. So now anywhere I go, even if I go over the truck, it's just going to be removing just that color. And we'll go over there, good, and bring this over here to the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing, hold on to the command key and click, and go in through these trees, and up on top here. And let's get behind the light as well. Okay, now I still have some work to do on the trees, and I'm going to try and use the refine brush on that. And I'll shrink my brush size down just a little bit and paint over this area here. And we'll see if the refine brush can do what it's supposed to do and refine that mask over the tree. There we go. That did a good job. And let's come over to this side over here. I'll shrink the brush size down a little bit more. And we'll come over this tree line here. And over the saguaros. And let that do its work. Okay, good. We'll just hit this one area one more time. All right, excellent. Now I have a little bit of an edge around the hood of the truck, so I will use the chisel tool. And I have an amount set at one. We'll see how that does. And I'm just going to chisel over the saguaros and just come right along the edge of the truck here. What that's doing is taking away that white edging around there and looks like we've got a little bit of white edging down in there perfect and we'll go along the top of the truck as well and let's definitely get inside this window here I'm going to zoom in a little bit more 
and looks like I'm gonna go back to the perfect brush just to try and fine-tune this edging before I chisel away the edge there there we go fine-tune that go back to the chisel tool you'll know that when you're doing masking you have to oftentimes you have to jump between tools keep on going back and forth between tools to get the perfect cutout for you now I also have some blue sky in there I'll go back to my masking brush and I'll just paint out that center area in there and go back to the chisel tool get rid of my edge up on top and my edge on the bottom and let's see here go right along the edge there now I'm actually going to want to paint back in a little bit of that window because I had red inside there and I know that that red is reflecting off the glass so if I mask that out I'm not going to be able to bring that back in so I'm going to shrink my brush size down I'm going to hit X on my keyboard and it's going to change my mode from paint out to paint in and I will just paint back in this little area here right on the front of the windshield and whoop, if you go over you can undo it real quick and shrink my brush size down a little bit more and just paint in just in that area there and we'll get this section here too okay now what I want to do is take a quick look at my mask and see how good that came out okay looks pretty good except for a couple areas here that are black and that will end up shining through on other layers so I'm gonna turn off my masking brush and I'm just gonna paint in those areas that are black so that those aren't masked and just a couple more spots okay good I have a good mask now and I will turn off my mask preview I don't need that color fill layer anymore so I'll select that and I will remove it and now we can see that my sky has disappeared and we're seeing just the truck down below what I'm gonna do is click on invert that's gonna invert and flip the mask around so now we have my mask is the sky and we can see this is the sky that I want to save and we're going to be now taking all these other photos in this layer stack and compositing them all together so what I'm going to do now is let's turn off all these bottom layers here and we can see here's my mask and I want to have the red from the window I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to do that by hitting command J and whoops let me uh, make sure that I want to I want to select the window layer and hit command J and duplicate that layer and I'm going to turn off both of those right now and let's turn on the basic truck layer on the bottom okay good now the reason why I did a duplicate on this window layer we're gonna see that in a second here because as I turn this layer on I am gonna make sure that this window layer is selected I'm gonna invert my mask this makes this layer disappear and now what I'm gonna do is paint in the effect of the red so I'm gonna zoom in on my window and let's just use the uh, brush I'm not going to use any perfect brush at all or anything like that I'm just going to do a real sloppy paint in on the window and what I'll do is I'll it'll be messy right now but then I'm going to clean that up using the perfect brush but I want to make sure I'm getting all of the red selected here okay so why did I duplicate that layer if I turn this bottom layer on and off I can see if I'm missing any other red throughout the photo uh, if I come over here and I can turn this on and off see how I have a little bit of red in the back here let's just paint in this area here to bring in some of that red and then I also know I have some red on the back over here so I can turn this on and off so this duplicate layer is just working as a preview for me to turn on and off to see where I need to work and pull in color from different layers so I'm just gonna go through here and we'll paint in this red and I'll shrink down my brush size and zoom in a little bit more so I can get right along this edge there we go and I'm gonna increase my feathering by holding on to the shift key and hitting the bracket keys that'll give me a little bit of a softer edge as I'm going right along the, the top of the truck 
There we go, perfect. Okay, let's zoom out and take a look at that. Not too bad, except now we have a little bit of cleanup to do in this window. So now I am going to turn my perfect brush on and what I'm gonna do here is hit X to now paint out and I'm just gonna paint out along the edge and see how that easily takes care of my mask right along the edge there. There we go, and let's zoom in a little bit more. When you're doing masking, make sure that you do zoom in and out quite a bit to see what you're doing and making sure that you're getting just the right areas masked. And we'll come along the edge up on the top here. Very good. And let's get this center area right here. By using the masking or by using the perfect brush, I'm making sure that the dead center of my brush is staying on the colors and tones that I want to remove. If I bring this over into the red, it'll start painting out the red, and that's not what I want to have happen. And I think we had a little section in the back here too. Let's see. Increase my brush size, and we'll come right along the edge there. Decrease my brush size. And good. And see if there's any area on the bottom here to just remove. Make that line just a little bit straighter. And undo that. And I'm going to hit X just to get this little, whoop, just get that little edge there. Okay. Very cool. I got all the red that I needed from up on top here. Now let's take a look at the tire. I'm going to drag the tire up above the truck layer so we can see that. And just like before, I'm going to duplicate that layer and we'll turn that on. Okay, so this is all the area that I want to bring in now in red. Now that I have that layer inverted, I'm going to paint in everywhere that has that red. And we're going to go all the way along the bottom here and get that whole section done. There we go. So now I've got all the red where I want it and I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to lower the opacity of my brush and let's lower that to about 25. I have a blue layer down here and I might want to add some of that blue back in. So instead of paint in, I'm going to paint out and just lighten up this foreground. And then what that's going to enable me to do is when I have that blue layer, I'll have a little bit of that blue coming in. And let's lower the opacity a little bit more and let's make this tire up here. And let's get that opacity up to maybe 11. I like lowering the opacity and painting in at stages. And this allows me a lot more control when I'm brushing. There we are. Lower the brush a little bit, gets the inside here. I just want to have a little bit of detail coming through. Not too much because I really do like that red glow, but there we go. And went over just a little bit. And let's increase the brush size. I'll go over this tire just one more time. Okay, good. I'm going to increase my opacity all the way up to 100. I'm going to turn on my perfect brush and I'm going to hold on to the command key and clean up around this tire. Get that fender so we can see that. And one little spot over there. Okay, starting to look really good. Excellent. So that layer is all set. Let's take this blue layer now and throw that up above the truck layer. And I'm going to duplicate that layer as well. And we can turn on and off and see where the blue is. And I'm going to zoom in here, turn on that layer, and invert my mask. 
and I'm going to paint in some blue and let's not go at 100%, let's lower that down to 70. I'm going to turn off my perfect brush and paint in right over the light up there and clean that up just a little bit. Perfect. And, you know, let's put some blue on the gas cap here. And I think this is a brake drum in the back here. I'm going to lower my opacity a little bit more and paint in some blue down here as well. And you know what? I'm going to undo that and start from scratch. There we go. I'm going to try and do this all at once. What happened was I had it at a lower opacity and when I went over it a second time you can then see my brush strokes a little bit more clearer. So we'll do that, come down here, paint in this area and let's zoom in and get this brake line. Oh, let's get this back area. This back area here. Just darken that up and you know, I'm not liking how that came out. Let's lower the opacity a little bit more to fade that in even more. There we go. And we'll go on this line over here. Just to get that a little blue. I'm not liking how that works. Okay, let's take a look at that zoomed out. That's looking pretty good. And you know, let's take a look at that foreground. Mentioned, I mentioned that I wanted to have a little bit of blue in that foreground. Increase my brush size. And I have a low opacity. So let's paint in just a little bit of blue down below. There we go. Okay, very cool. Excellent. So now I've composited all these layers together and what I want to do now is make some fine-tune adjustments to the specific layers. So for instance, let's take the sky layer and I'm going to bring that into effects. And I want to do a special effect on the sky. And let's click on add a filter and let's pick the bleach bypass and let's see here I'm gonna go with high key warm and maybe increase the saturation a little bit and lower lower the overall opacity just a touch there we go that looks pretty good I'm gonna click apply now notice how that only affected just the sky it, the when you go into effects it's taken into consideration the masking that you have from layers. So I was able to do that effect on the sky and not have any of the other parts of the photo be affected. Uh, let's go into the truck and let's take the truck layer and bring that into effects. And anything that I do now with this truck layer is just going to affect the truck. And you know what? I'm going to use that bleach bypass filter again but this time I'm not going to use it anywhere near as strong. I just want a subtle effect from that. So I'm just going to use the uh, the high key warm again. Lower the opacity to, uh, let's see here, maybe 21. Increase the brightness just a touch. And let's add another filter and let's add some dynamic contrast. And let's see here, let's take a look at natural, the natural preset. And that looks pretty good. I might increase the small detail just a tiny bit. And let me preview that on and off. There you go. Added some nice detail to that. Let's click on apply.
Okay, very cool. Let me now go into the tire layer and let's see if we can maybe punch that up just a little bit by going into effects. Bring that in there and what I'm going to do is click on add a new filter and let's go into the tone enhancer and turn off the auto and I want to increase the brightness a little bit. There we go. And now it's increasing the brightness of the blue area as well. So what I want to do is just make sure that I paint that area out. So I'll click on my brush and increase the size and just paint out the bottom area there because I did like how the bottom was a little bit darker. Now remember this tire layer, it had some masking in the bottom there. So that's why I need to paint that out. As I was increasing the brightness, it was also increasing the bottom here. And again, that's because there was a little bit of a mask going on inside there. And remember, I had that mask so that we could see the uh, some of the blue coming through. Okay, let's take a look at the before and after. Let me brighten that up just a hair more. Okay, good. I'm going to click on Apply. And I think this is pretty much all that I want to do with the selective coloring or I'm sorry, with the uh, selective adjustments on each of the layers. I'm going to click on the top layer and what I'm going to do now is go under mask or I'm sorry, I'm going to go under layer and do a new stamped layer. What this does is it combines all these layers together into one and now I can do any adjustments that I want to the whole photo globally. So let's go into Enhance real quick. And I'll just do some real quick fine tuning of this photo. And let's go to the color adjustments. Let's see if I increase the exposure just a hair. Maybe uh, let's take a look at the contrast. Increase the contrast a little bit. And maybe give it a little bit more detail overall. Uh, temperature looks good. Let's click on the vignette and let's give it just a little bit of a vignette. There we go. All right, excellent. I'm going to click on apply. And now I am done. All I have to do now is click on save and I have my finished photo. And there's my finished composite photo there, combination of five different photos that I composited together using On One Photo 10 layers. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this really fast demonstration on compositing different photos using On One Photo 10 and inside of layers. I went through it pretty quickly, but uh, with the benefit of this video, you can pause and rewind and go back through and rewatch the steps that I talked about. And hopefully this will help you with your own compositing of your own photos. Feel free to check me out on my website at mattsuess.com. That's M-A-T-T-S-U-E-S-S dot -S com. And you'll find I have a whole bunch of photo workshops and field workshops, classroom workshops using On One Photo 10. And also check out On One's website as well where you can find other videos that I have posted on their website. That's it for now and I'll see you later.